J.K. Rowling. I, Jin Freaks, secret reincarnated soul, future full-time cosplayer, is the cleverest person in the world. Ha! <laughs> Those endurance tests I did since I was six and these muscle thighs are now paying off. I stayed behind Gun the whole way, always on the lookout for Hisoka. Just thinking of him is giving me the creeps. Sadots, the first phase examiner had very long legs and a face with no mouth. It made me wonder if he wears a skin face mask to hide his mouth or something. But why would he hide them? Does he have butt teeth? Extreme pouty lips? Ooh, a secret mouth and tongue weapon. Hmm, kinky. I glanced at Liario who was running ahead of us but now getting slower and slower at each second. His breathing was much labored and he was already sweating heavily. He also haven't drank anything else since we met the navigators. He won't lie longer. I don't have anything in my bag to make him feel better. Aha clicking my fingers, I removed my backpack and strapped them in front of me. I unzipped it and rooted for the small packet. I scowled. Where the hell is it? Jin. Shut it. I'm looking for something gun. Okay. In front, Liario shouting at some kid, who was apparently cheating. There was a flash of silver and I looked up. Oh, it was Gon's future best friend riding his skateboard. I swept my eyes down and pointedly stared at his skateboard for a bit longer. No weapons. I looked down to my brown backpack and checked one of the outer pockets. I checked the others too then sighed when I found no sight of it. I sniffed around my bag, hoping to catch a whiff of it. It's not. The examiner said to follow him. He didn't really say anything about how my brother announced frankly. I nodded then flinched as my sensitive ears got abused by Liario's resounding shout. Whose side are you on? Gone. I continued scouring my bag madly. I just know I'd put it here somewhere. I muttered to myself. People, including us, started to get past Liario who's now traipsing, arms limp and heavy and knees trembling. Suddenly the white-haired kid was beside me with a skateboard tucked in his arm. He leaned in, smelling like sweet chocolates. Your girl. Very well spotted I said, the reply sounding just right for the situation. Our eyes met, hazel versus blue. Up close, he looks really cute. Haha, ha, can't believe I called this assassin kid cute. He was probably killing people before he can say resuscitate. What, kid? I raised an eyebrow at him. When he didn't answer, I resumed my search, pursing my lips as I thought. I've searched every corner but still no sign of it. You're a kid, too. I clicked my tongue. I'm older than you by heart and by soul I told him, most solemnly and most truthfully. He made a face. We are twelve, Gon said brightly from beside me. Sis, seriously what are you looking for? I'm searching for those mint candies. You know, the one granny gave me for the ship. He tilted his head to the side and blinked elishly. Of course, the boy was too excited to leave that morning. I can't believe I can't remember where I put it, I groaned. Hmm have you checked your pocket? Asked Gon, head to the side, looking so cute and innocent. My pace faltered. In a flash, I zipped up my backpack and replaced them to my back. I then felt my pockets. Oh, ha ha ha, I pulled out a bag of circular mint candies. I stretched the bag open. I picked one up and pushed it to Gon's lips. He yelped after a second, tears forming in his eyes. Thanks, gone. Spishy. Then, I turned to the silver-haired kid whose name I really need to ask. Here I offered him one. He took it into his palm and then scrutinized it for a second before shrugging and popping the candy into his mouth. I jogged backwards and shoved an exhausted Liario to the side by the shoulder playfully. I reached out and stopped him from falling down. Poor old man looked even skinnier after four hours of endurance plus mental fortitude test. And he was still trying so hard. He didn't even shout at me for pushing him. His hand dropped his suitcase, the one he filled with cheap medicines and bandages, and his magazines too. But he kept on going like he was trudging underwater. I carefully picked two mints and bit into them a little bit then pushed the candies into his parted mouth. His eyes were half-lidded when he turned to gaze at me. I smiled and watched as his face slowly filled with color. I pulled up a tail of my long scarf to wipe off his sweat. Just imagine an extremely hot blonde woman with huge heaving boobs and shining ass at the finish line, Liario. Imagine a bunch of them begging for you, the doctor, to check them out. Popping a candy into my mouth, I pocketed the rest of my packet and jogged away. He's coming. I told Gon, who stopped and was looking expectantly at Liario. I stared curiously at him, wondering what the hell he was thinking about now. Damn it. Damn it all. I won't fail. I'll have that money. Wait for me. Gon's face lifted up to a bright happy grin that can only belong to a child. Liario rushed past us, leaving behind his son and cheap men's cologne. Brandishing his fishing rod, Gon expertly hooked Liario's suitcase and pulled it into his hand. The white-haired kid beside him exclaimed in awe. They exchanged a pleasant trait of letting their toys to each other. Okay. I need to ignore the unintended sex pun there. I let the boys talk and mainly kept to myself. I thought of Kiloda. I've heard his name was from my brother's lips. All I know about him from my visions is that he is a transmutation type Nen user but this is a spoiler he can't know yet. He's from a family of assassins the Zoldic. His brother is obsessed with needles and has the creepiest eyes ever. He hangs out with Hisoka. Surprise. One weirdo plus one weirdo equals two weirdos. My dad's a hunter. So I want to be a hunter just like him. I closed my eyes and tried to fight off the sudden throb in my head. I think I'm getting dehydrated again. Hmm, what type? 
Killo curiously asked. I don't know. Wait, what? You want to be just like your dad but you've no idea what type of hunter he is. Yep. Our father left us when we were really young to be a hunter. So, I want to be a hunter so I can know why my dad chose it over raising us. Sweet gone. My sweet big brother made it sound so good when he says it. If I ever repeat the sentence, it would sound completely different. Sort of like this. Fucking gang. It's his fault my brother's going through this exam with a sweet happy smile on his face. Bastard left us when we were really young. Forgive me, my ass. I want to be a hunter so I can bash his head to the floor then give him a fucking silent treatment. How dare he choose his job over his own kids. How can he stand himself? Didn't they teach him the importance of safe sex? Or were his sperm super hunters too? And this running, what happens after it? Are they trying to tire us out before they have us kill each other? This assassin kid is so close to my brother now. But depending if he warms up to gone, which I know he will, like, in a second or so. I mean, who wouldn't melt at the side of my brother's smile? Maybe that's the reason why Petus keep perving on him. God. Why did I realize this just now? In short, Killer will probably just kill everyone else just for fun and back out. So, the main problem is Hisoka and that green thing running not far from him. Because a guy with face like that means danger. They probably know each other. Because you know what they say? Birds of the same feathers makes a good feather duster. I reinstated myself beside my brother, completely blocking his sweetness in case Hisoka, the pervert sniffs them out. The two boys turned to look at me. What? Gon smiled. Killer blinked at me as innocent as a stray cat until you see that cat feasting on a rabbit or squirrel. We're having a race to the finish line he informed, blue eyes examining every detail on my face. He didn't look down to check out my cool outfit. I have a feeling he has already measured up my strength when I was too busy looking for my mint candies. I wonder what he thought of me. There's better be a cute there somewhere. But I'd settle with pretty and beautiful too. Wanna join, sis? Gon asked nicely. I looked at Killer whose face was out of interest. There was a spark in his eyes but also a hint of judgment. Okay, maybe a lot of judgment there. Boy doesn't expect me to keep up. I couldn't help but glare at his stupid catfish face. Fine. What do I get when I'm winner? If you're winner Killo replied, drilly. The winner? Gone trailed off as he thought, completely ignoring the atmosphere. Slave for a week. Or human chair for a week. Yes. Comma. Gets to buy dinner. Gone said. I blinked, a little disappointed. Fine. I crossed my arms. Can't believe I'm playing with kids. I muttered the last part to myself. Che. You do realize you're a kid right? We're the same age said someone. I pointedly looked away. That's what you all think. Kids, just be happy I'm not a pedophile. I'm like, Hisoka's secret dream. Hee <laughs> hee, Jin doesn't play much with other kids gone informed. I felt Killo's gaze on me. Jin? Pfft. Your name's gone, he pointed at gone. And your sister's Jin? Well, that's cute. Pfft. The silver-haired kid cackled, slapping his thigh continuously and clutching his stomach. I fought to urge to slap the catfish out of him. Instead, I rolled my eyes and cursed King to infinity. I hope he slips on a banana peel every three seconds for the next 24 hours, wherever he is. I smirked at the funny image in my head. Ha! <laughs> Take that you baby deserter. Yosh. Shall we start? I sighed. The two boys literally used that competition. Why do I know so many people like this? They be mad every challenge. They don't just sit down. Can't they relax or something? One, two, three. The boys increased their pace. I followed after a moment, a lot glad to the added distance between Hisoka and my brother. While we ran at a steady pace, I let my thoughts wander. The first thing that my mind has flown to, was most predictably, home. Gone. The two boys turned sharply to me. What, sis? Did you leave Foxy some berries and grubs? Foxy. Gone sighed and nodded his head. He knows how to hunt, sis. He'll be fine he turned to his new friend. He's a friend from home. Killo scowled like someone just told him that his mother was actually a man. Your sister's gin and your friend is called Foxy. I raised an eyebrow and regarded him coolly. Foxy's a fox bear, Killo. Don't be silly. I nodded, agreeing with Gone. I felt a little guilty when I imagined our big friend glancing behind his shoulder time after time to check for our presence. I covered my mouth, horrified. What if he goes to her house and check? Mito's gonna freak. I giggled. No wonder Mito freaks out all the time. Your sister's crazy. What? Of course not. She just does this sometimes. That's okay, my family's crazy, too. Jin's not crazy. Right sis, I turned to them, eyes bright with mirth. I waved my hand at the man focused on a head. I saw from the corner of my eyes that Kilo gravely shook his head. Whatever, boys. I'm busy freezing out here. Pfft. Then, the humor left me when I saw an endless amount of steps and the fact that the white-haired, mouthless examiner seemed to have gone faster. From what I could hear, many applicants don't seem happy about this. Bit by bit, there were more people dropping out. Some of them were even crying while they tried to desperately catch their breath. To be honest, I think this was for their own good. If they continue like this, they will most definitely lose more. I looked down at my young body and wondered how much did Jing's genes caused my endurance and how much came from my own. I felt my happiness stemmed like there was a demeanor nearby. 
I estimate that we've covered about 80 kilometers of running already. How much more are they going to push us? What's after this? A full-out battle? A survival challenge? Expecto patronum. I mumbled to myself and I giggled, full of energy again as I bypassed the passed out applicant, my twin scarves trailing behind me. Several applicants glanced over their shoulders warily. All right, I'm gonna dress up as Professor McGonagall after the exam. Oh my? I can't wait. Behind me, Killo patted my brother's shoulder. My nose took me out of my daydream, about my new wizard outfit, when it sniffed out a whisper of fresh air and sent the information to my brain. My brain said, Yeehaw! We're nearly out in an overly exaggerated Texan accent. And I was like, oh man. Time to get serious again. The boy picked up their pace and so I did too. I was determined to win because the pride of all women rests on my shouters. My heart thudded in anticipation as we approached the bright end. Sadat stopped at the last step and just as he was twisting to turn, with added boost of speed, gone. Killa and I leaped out, shouting, goal. H.A. I won. By me dinner I twirled and smirked at the boys. Killa crossed his arms and shook his head. Ah, uh -uh. I won. You two owe me dinner, he pointed at us. Gon shook his head, looking completely adorable as a puppy. Nope. Nope. I think I won, but I had to steal myself for the sake of girl power. H.M.P.H. As if. Gone. You're ten years too early to defeat me. I wasn't even sweating this is a lie. My armpits are actually wet. Me neither said Killa. And me. Oh, sweet brother is lying too. I turned my nose up, completely into the growing argument. Kids. I'm not even out of breath. Therefore, a win I told him, as a matter of factly. Killa's eyes narrowed a little and looked at me up and down. I smirked at him and brushed imaginary dirt on my shoulder. Mr. Sadots. Who do you think finished first? Sweet Gon turned and asked the examiner innocently. He really needs to learn how to rephrase questions. I crossed my arms and watched him watch us. I eagerly waited for him to talk. I believe you three arrived at the same time I rolled my eyes. But if you should ask who finished last, then it should be number 405. I smirked at the two boys, number 99 and 406. I looked down in disbelief. I turned and narrowed my eyes again at the tall examiner. What do you mean? I arrived exactly the same time as them. Indeed? However, your clothes trailed off behind, your scarves, to be specific the gnome out of men replied, nonchalantly. But yes, you all stepped out at the same time I scowled at his back and imagined myself jumping and throttling him from behind. My eye twitched and my fingers itched. This guy. Did I do him something wrong? All I did was think that he might have. I eyed the examiner warily and took a few steps back. Can he read minds? Someone, of course, that catfish, chortled. I guess, you buy us dinner. Then he spoke, voice low and treacherous. His eyes also darkened a little, resembling that face I saw from my imaginary cards. Come to think of it, I haven't thought of a name for them. Calling them imagination cards are so lame. Hmm. Cards of Doom? No. See cards? No future cards? Jing cards? Hunter cards? X cards? I nodded, satisfied at the moment. Oi. Are you listening, airhead? My eyes refocused to Killua, then to Gon. I looked around me for Liario. Yes. You? Seriously Gon. Is she always like this? I placed my hands on my hips, watching my brother sweat and fidget. K. Killua? Of course not. Jin. She? Well. She. I narrowed my eyes, not liking where this was going. Fine. I'll buy you two dinner. But nothing above 30 jennies. At this, Gon smiled and nodded, bouncing on his feet. On the other hand, Killua made a disbelieving face. What? What kind of dinner is 30 jennies? I turned away, hands crossed. We agreed that the low, that the one who. Wait. My scarf has not a part in this. We got out at the same time. Catfish smirked. Never mind that. The examiner spoke for himself and clearly, so clearly emphasized at you. Yes. You lost. L-O-S-T, lost. I did not. Loser, he, so childishly, pointed at me. You are so childish. I can't believe I'm talking to you. I scanned the surroundings for a sign of blonde head. I figured I require a dose of logic from Curapica. Unfortunately, I saw Red. He was alone, smiling like a snake in a flock of chickens and a group of five rabbits, the cute rabbits namely me. Gone. Curapica, Liario and Killua. I sharply turned back to Killua. Fine, kid. I'll buy dinner as long as you keep quiet Killer opened his mouth. Before I knew it, we were in a small circle. I continued in a more serious tone. Most of the applicants who survived that run are here now. We need to get serious, again. You don't know who are watching at this. His blue eyes seemed to darken. He nodded once and we separated in a state of detente. I stepped beside my brother with a small smile and caught his arm around mine. I need to hide this boy or else. I leaned my suddenly aching head to his shoulder. For some evil reason, I can hear his soak his voice in my head, moaning and hungry for gone. I shivered and held my brother closer. Fuck you, pedophile. I'll fucking drag you to hell before I even let you molest my brother. I need to hide my brother from him. That is my main priority. But how? This boy literally shines like a beacon. Hisoka will, no doubt, sniff him out sooner or later. I thought of how I could keep him off Hisoka's pedo radar. 
Should I dress up like Gon and pretend to be a pubescent boy? I shivered and rubbed my forehead against my brother's shirt. God. Just thinking of him is so disgusting. Jin. I hummed. You okay? I nodded. Want me to carry you? I thought about it but shook my head no. I took note of our new surroundings from above Gon's shoulder. It was a vast land, full of mystery and wild. I tilted my face up and sniffed the air. The air was cold and wet. There was a lot of fog, reducing visibility. If the air was wet, the land must be wet, too. And muddy. It will be difficult to run and see any traps laid out to kill us. My boots will suffer here and die. Hey! Curapica! Liario! Gon waved. 